Cebu Doctors University at CPU. So be clear about that. You know? And then the other one, the next one is the Theological at uh, the Eucharistic Congress, which is at the on January 24 to 31. <coughs> And the location is at San Carlos Seminary, near Carmen, Cebu, Dupo. Uh, and we are told that there is a drop-off point there. So, let us be very clear. In terms of accommodations of our catechetical directors and coordinators, go directly to Cebu. In other words, contact Father and Sister Mariko. May we request contact numbers, Father, please? Ngayon na. Ngayon na. Pagalutan tayo. Sige na, makibigay na. Pag-flash. Okay, so, contact sa kanila kasi sila na ang magpo-provide sa atin ng accommodations. Kasama na rin doon ang transportation. Oh, everything will be included there because you will be uh, using the carousel road depending upon where you are going to stay. There will be a carousel road. But no, no, near, near Madawi. Near Madawi. That is Madawi. Ah, around 200 buses. Kasi maliit lang kasi yung palsada ngayon eh. So they really have to identify only the transport that will bring people around. Alright? So clear na tayo. Going, going. Eucharistic Congress. So, makakusan tayo magkita doon. Nasaan ka? Nasa buhol. Ikaw, nasa Jeno Sali. <laughs> With regards to the First Holy Communion, Father, best effort, right? Uh, best effort, because it's the first time I heard about that. So, best effort, because we know the constraints. It's not also financial, but also the logistical. Because I'm told that the 20 families, let's call them families na lang, the 20 families will have to be shouldered by the respective diocese, not by Cebu. Hindi kayo, no? Oh, si Mas Sister Maricon, magbabayad ng lahat ng mga na yun. So, clear tayo doon. Okay? Clear tayo. So, two things. We've, we've made the decision this evening with regards to accommodations. Go directly to Sister... Ayan na o, yung, ano, yung uh, homepage ng International Eucharistic Congress. You just open the website. So, everything is there. All right, everything is there. All the the schedule as well as the the, the programs. No, so Jenyan, take note that it's a week after Sinulog, right? So, so you can imagine the tourists who are also still there when you arrive. So, so that is the countdown na sila hanggang sa mga oras na ito na countdown sila. So, second point would be accommodations ng grupo ito would be with Father Tony and Sister Marito. Okay? They'll take care of you. Uh, Father, Sister, you'll, you'll take care of their transport and their food and their accommodations, right? <laughs> yes! You will take care of that. They will not pay a single centavo. <laughs> ah, they have two. Everything will be included in the accommodation. They will choose the hotel. The hotel will give them the, the, the food. <laughs> okay. If the homes, the homes will provide. Ah, yeah, oh, yeah. You'll give the homes. So, PPDC that. Bahala na, Sister Maricon. But it's all that. You pay your own, right? Yeah, pay your own. But in transport, you 
Libre yun. And registration you pay. Yeah. So you please register now because sabi nga ni Father, habang lumalapit, tumataas. Okay? Tumataas ang registration fee. Okay, ube yun? Going, going. We move to Vietnam. Okay, we go from Cebu to Vietnam. Pag tumiyahin na tayo sa Vietnam. May mga retrato ka dyan ng Vietnam. Sige, pakikita natin ang mga retrato sa Vietnam. And then after that, uh, reflections from my brother priest who were present at the Vietnam Catechetical uh, Program. Vietnam. We visited different places. We stayed in the compound of the Bishop of Xuan Lok, who was very accommodating, hospitable, and very open to us. Such a jolly person, a very holy man. And in that was the seminary of Xuan Lok. They have 500 seminarians, 250 philosophers, and 250 theologians. And then the next day, I'm just giving an itinerary. We went to the Dominican Sisters of St. Catherine of Siena, Isila. This is a congregation founded in 1965. They have 2,000 members, the sisters. And then we went to the Sisters of St. Paul of Sharp, which is the, the congregation where the sisters here also belong, an international congregation, French. And they have so many sisters also, young and pretty. <laughs> young and pretty. Yeah, because each each of us was uh, no was we were so we were so impressed that these are young sisters. Yet when they leave the compound, they have to wear secular clothing. They're not allowed to wear veils outside. But what struck me and what touched me was that we went to a parish because we were divided into three groups. I was in one group. I will allow uh, Bishop Francis to speak about this group. We were brought to a parish where there was a Vietnamese who would collect aborted babies in the hospital because abortion is legal in Vietnam. So he would collect all of these aborted fetuses and would bring them to the parish, they would celebrate Mass and they would have a common burial place. I, I did not go down because I don't have the stomach to, to see it because it's, it's really, it's something that, that, was, uh, that was really disturbing me. That night we went to the parish where we celebrated Mass. Take note, there are no Catholic schools in Vietnam. But they have a very strong catechetical instruction program which happens in the evening every day. And we were so impressed that there are huge buildings at the back of the church where we went and we discovered that these huge buildings are really the classrooms that would accommodate the children who would undergo catechetical instruction. And the catechists are all volunteer catechists who work in factories, work in odd jobs during the day. Odd jobs meaning, if you're Catholic, you're a second-rate citizen in Vietnam. You're not given importance in Vietnam. But these people are teaching the faith. But please take note, in that parish where we were at, there were 50 boys who were already being prepared to enter the seminary. Now, what is the mindset of the Vietnamese family? The mindset is every Vietnamese Catholic family must give one child to the priestly or consecrated life. So there is that basic framework that one of the children will have to embrace the religious or priestly vocation. Now, what happens? A mass was celebrated. I was the one who presided in the mass. And the children, when they enter, are also disciplined whenever they enter the, ch the church. Impressive. Impressive. 
they would be playing around outside the church. As soon as they enter, they would look smart, put their hands around, bow at the Blessed Sacrament or the Tabernacle, go, and then kneel down and pray, and then sit down and quiet. They could not move their hands. Why? Moving their hands inside the church is disrespectful. So there's that culture. The culture of religiosity is present. And the, 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 the parents are outside waiting after the one and a half hours of catechetical instruction every day. So religion is being taught. But it is parish-based. But please take note, there are no Catholic schools. Now, later on, when I gave a talk to the Couples for Christ International of Frank Padilla, I mentioned this. And I did know that one couple is Vietnamese. When Couples for Christ went to Vietnam to conduct the Christian Life Program, there was only one couple who underwent the program. Only one couple. But now, today, there are more than 1,000 Couples for Christ in Vietnam. They are now creating such a move of Catholicity in that place. So, uh, one big reason when, when I was studying it, and Archbishop uh, Ramon Arguelles, who was with us, underlined this, is because compared to the Philippines, the church in Vietnam underwent so much religious persecution. Once again, going back to Tertullian, the, the, the blood of martyrs is the seed of Christianity. Christianity has grown by leaps and bounds because of the great suffering of the people. Because they have also experienced the pastoral mystery in the most profound way. Thus, the people have owned Catholicity, have fought for it. Of recent vintage, of course, is Cardinal Bantuan, who was the last Archbishop of Saigon, who was Take note, incarcerated in solitary confinement for nine years. And he was not allowed to have contact with people outside, but he was able to befriend after three years the guard outside his cell, and he was able to befriend him, and, he, and because of that, he requested the guard to give him a cup of wine every day. Little did they know that he was celebrating Mass at night. After 13 years in prison, he was freed by the Vietnamese government and was sent to Rome, where he was welcomed by John Paul II. John Paul II made him cardinal, and it, he was appointed as president of the Pontifical Council of Justice and Peace, and he was instrumental in the first manuscript of the Compendium of the Social Doctrine of the Church. But he died before the compendium was finished. He died of cancer. They just opened recently his cause for the education. Cardinal Francis Xavier Van Juan, the last uh, Archbishop of Simon. Now it is now the Archdiocese of uh, Nong Pen. So, of Hanoi. So, Significant po is this, what impressed me is the religiosity of the people. And the seminarians, they all wore black paso, and they would wake up at 4 o'clock for morning prayers at 4.30. So all of us please have to wake up early because we have to join them in the Mass. And what was very impressive is that how the seminarians pray with a great deal of fervor, with a great deal of passion, and with a great deal of discipline, they hardly move. But the whole chapel, which looks like a cathedral, was reverberating with their voices because they would chant the songs of the Lord's and the Vespers. And that Thursday, we had the Holy Hour. That, that, that profound faith in the Lord is something that attracted me. And uh, why, why were they able to build those big edifices in, 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 in that place? It's, it's, it's a diocese by standards. No? It is because the, Viet, the Catholic Vietnamese in the diaspora, now in Europe and the United States, will continue to send 
financial aid to the church in Vietnam. In other words, they're still looking at their motherland. And they continue to support the church in Vietnam. That is why they're able to create such beautiful edifices. And uh, the, the bishops are, are, are very holy. There's something exquisite about the, the bishops. Yeah. They, have a, they have a very strong love for the church. And the priests, priests and sisters, work closely together. And it's so much joy because you would hear them eating together. And ganun pala sila, ang breakfast nila lagi ay soup. Kaya pala walang sakit. Kaya kasi puro mga pinarito eh. Doon po sa bao, araw-araw. And so, just an exchange that I was impressed by it. So, maybe request of Bishop Francis, maybe some of the priests who were there can, can share uh, bit of their experience. Ay, ito na yun. Sige nga, pakita mo yung mga pictures lang. Yung conference room na.